Bernardo joins the military. Like his father, he had spent a number of years in the Canary Islands, and in 1762, Bernardo de Galvez joins in the attack on Portugal. This was during a period when Spain and Portugal were at war against each other, and Bernardo de Galvez has his first taste of the military. Surprisingly enough, Bernardo de Galvez turns out to be a natural as a military leader. Like all good military leaders, he is able to encourage his men. He puts his men first. His men are the ones that he worries about. And Bernardo de Galvez is promoted because of his courage and his ability during the attack on Portugal in 1762. The next year, most of you remember the period that is known as the French and Indian War, the Seven Years' War. Uh, this war is going to be, again, almost an international crisis. And during this war, the British and the French, and many people frequently suggest that it is the French that are fighting the English, when actually it was the Indians who were doing most of the fighting. It was the native tribes for the British and the native tribes for the French who were doing most of the bleeding and dying. So in this case, by the peace of 1763, I know most of you are familiar with the result of that war, and in this case, France is going to lose all of Canada. France is going to lose Louisiana. The French are going to be basically removed from the New World, and the British are then going to step into their places, with the exception of Louisiana. Louisiana is going to go to the Spanish. This is in part as a thank you from the French to the Spanish for having supported the French during the war. The French had not really cared about Louisiana. They weren't getting much more than supplies of furs from the area, and so it was not a particularly important region for them. But in this case, the Peace of 1763 is going to mean that now Spain has to figure out what they're going to do with Louisiana. And it is Charles III, not a particularly prepossessing looking gentleman. Uh, he looks a little scarecrowish, I know, but in this case, Charles III was actually an amazingly brilliant man. And what he did, in addition to improving trade for the New World, he also lowered the taxes. Up until this time, the taxes had been 20%, the king's 20th, the king's quinto, the fifth. But what he does is to reduce the taxes. He reduces them to 10%. But for the first time, we're going to find that the people in the New World are actually going to have to pay the taxes. From 1763 on, he begins to send tax collectors, Spanish peninsular tax collectors, to, to the New World. He doesn't necessarily trust the local people. The Creole, the term Creole, is actually one that is used in France, in Louisiana a great deal, but in the case of New Spain, a Creole is somebody of Spanish ancestry, Spanish blood, no mixture, but somebody who has also become loyal, not to Spain, but to their local area. 